Is autism just trauma? Is autism caused by trauma? Short answer, no and no. However, this question is not as dumb as it may seem at first glance, and it has a number of practical implications, especially for autistic adults trying to untangle one from the other. Hi everyone, Paul Mikolev here from Asperger's From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So autism and trauma, it's perhaps not all of that surprising that people get the two confused or that some people even suggest that maybe autism is just trauma. And that's because from the outside, a lot of behaviors, a lot of observable things seem the same or at least very similar, especially when you're looking at it from the outside. And one of the main reasons for this is because when we get overwhelmed or overloaded, our bodies tend to respond with comparatively primitive emotional reactions, sometimes called fight and flight. And in extreme cases, this can lead to a complete self-preservation shutdown or freeze. So why am I mentioning this? In this overloaded state, we see a lot of characteristics that are commonly associated with autism. Loss of executive function, emotional dysregulation, sensory sensitivity, social challenges, especially difficulty connecting and communicating with other people. And they're just the physical responses. Along with that, we often see a variety of psychological defense mechanisms, such as denial or dissociation. When things are too much, when reality seems too terrible to face directly, our brains can sometimes kick in and try and protect us from that. So I won't go into too much technical detail around the medical side of things, but in the last couple of decades, we've learned a lot about the physiological and psychological effects of stress and overwhelm, including trauma, PTSD, and polyvagal theory. If you'd like more info on any of those, I did a detailed video on autism, trauma, and PTSD that you might like to check out. I can also recommend a great book that you may have heard of. It's called The Body Keeps the Score um, by Bessel van der Kolk. It's a really solid grounding in understanding the mechanics behind polyvagal theory and understanding what happens to our bodies during trauma and PTSD. My only caveat with the book is it's perhaps unsurprisingly quite heavy. It's over 16 hours of cover to cover abuse and trauma. So just be aware of that before diving straight in. Alternatively, if you're the kind of person who would much prefer a concise summary giving you all the key points, you might like to try the short form app. They've sponsored part of this video and I'll include a special offer from them in the description. It's basically incredibly detailed yet concise summaries. So an entire book in one page plus individual chapter summaries as well. But the main reason I'm mentioning this book, The Body Keeps the Score, is because there's a chapter on what he calls developmental trauma. In other words, trauma that happens in childhood that interrupts normal development. Here are the three key characteristics that are identified with developmental trauma disorder. Number one, a pervasive pattern of dysregulation. Number two, problems with attention and concentration. And number three, difficulty getting along with themselves and others. He goes on to give a list of common observable behaviors. For example, rapidly shifting mood from tantrums to panic, detachment, flatness, and dissociation, inability to self-regulate or to describe feelings, oversensitivity to touch and sound, stimming behavior such as rocking or self-harm, and often language processing difficulties as well. So when I first read this book in my research for the autism and PTSD video, I was really shocked by how much of an overlap there were just in these handful of observable outward signs. And I guess this kind of makes sense because the, the core of autism is a difference, a brain difference, a neurological difference, a developmental difference often, which makes it challenging to relate to and communicate with one's peers which means I'm likely to be interested in things other people are not interested in. I'm likely to have sensory sensitivities and my sensory profile might be outside the normal range, or I might be more intelligent or less intelligent or more focused or less focused than, than the people around me. And when I react so differently to my environment than the, than the other people, it makes it difficult to connect and communicate with and form relationships with the people around me. So what I learned when reading about trauma and reading about polyvagal theory is that the key to empathy, the key to building relationships, the key to being open to any of that kind of social interaction at all is to firstly be physiologically safe. If my body is stressed, 
and responding to stress, if my body is anxious, if my body is afraid, if I'm overthinking things, then what happens is that I'm not naturally predisposed to respond to the signals of the people around me in an open and genuinely connecting way. And this kind of makes sense because to make social relationships work, we need a level of vulnerability. We need to let our guard down. We need to feel safe. We need to be open and then let others in to our emotional world. So when this environment is not safe, the first thing that goes is that ability for social connection and interaction. So in an autistic sense, there are so many reasons why an autistic person might not feel safe in a particular situation. There might be challenges with sensory overwhelm or a fear of rejection or a fear of being misunderstood. The need for certain adjustments and the inability to cope with the kind of everyday neurotypical demands that tend to get made of everyone you know, like small talk and looking someone in the eye. Sometimes it's these really, really small things that most people don't think about at all that can cause a huge amount of stress because these small things are difficult for me, yet if I don't do them, I risk being misunderstood, I risk social isolation, I risk rejection, I risk all of these other undesirable outcomes if I'm not able to do what I'm expected to do in a social situation, then suddenly this not feeling safe is very similar to a trauma response. It makes it hard to connect. It makes it hard to regulate my own emotions. And if I simply react without regulating my emotions, then I'm li liable to overreact or get angry or shut down or withdraw or any of these other kind of common stereotypical autistic behaviors that often lead to breakdowns in relationships. So when you put all of these together, it makes it harder to connect, harder to stay engaged and harder to get the help and support I actually need in a situation. So an interesting upside to all of this is that the more the psychology world learns about trauma and the more counselors and doctors and other professionals get trained in trauma sensitive care, it actually makes it easier for autistic people to get what they need as well. Because ultimately, the first thing that we need is to feel safe, is to not have that risk of rejection, is for others to help me to be understood, to create an environment where I'm not in sensory overwhelm and my body isn't reacting physiologically to a perceived danger. So what does this mean, especially for autistic adults trying to untangle autism versus trauma? Again, I'd recommend checking out my other video on autism, trauma and PTSD, but to, to summarize it, trauma is something that happens to you. It's like an injury that, like, that we need to heal from because there was an overwhelming situation. Whereas autism is an innate neurological difference, it's how my brain is wired, that can also lead me to feel unsafe, just like a past traumatic experience can lead me to feel unsafe. So ultimately, it all comes down to creating psychological and emotional safety. And if we can do that, then suddenly coping, healing, doing better and finding ways to maintain relationships with other people becomes easier and easier. So in practice, what that means is that we need to embrace and work with our autistic neurological differences, while at the same time recognize, take seriously and heal from our traumatic experiences through therapy and emotional work, for example. So if you have experienced trauma in your life, it's highly recommended that you speak to a trained therapist. These days, therapy is very accessible. You can find someone either locally or online. And if you're not sure where to start, I've included a link in the video description for a sponsored offer of 10% off your first month of online counseling with BetterHelp. When you sign up with them, they match you to a therapist automatically based on your preferences. So that's a very easy first step if you're not sure what to do or where to start. So I guess in summary, as I mentioned in the first couple of seconds of this video, autism is not just trauma. However, for autistic people especially, it definitely helps to get a sense of how our bodies respond to stress and overwhelm so that we can manage ourselves and our environments to ensure that psychological and emotional safety and make it easier to form genuine relationships. Clearly, this has been a big topic. I hope I haven't gone too much over time. I'd love to hear about your experience. 
not your traumatic experience. That's not really appropriate to share on a public forum. If you if you want to share your traumatic experience, find a trained professional and share it with them in a safe place. Remember, you can check out the BetterHelp online counseling link in the description if you're looking for someone to talk to about that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.